The end of Puppy Playtime Chapter 2 raised more questions than answering them, displaying that Puppy has more sinister intentions and ulterior motives than just guiding the protagonist to safety. A signboard labeled as Playcare also showed that the Playtime Co. Factory is much bigger and more twisted than initially thought to be. Hi folks, I'm R and welcome to the video. Make sure to send me your theory ideas on Twitter, which I could cover in the upcoming videos. As it should be clear by the title, this video will have spoilers. With that said, let's begin. The end of chapter 2 had a plot twist that many actually saw coming. Puppy was not who she was pretending to be. After the protagonist was lured into the factory with the thought that the Playtime Co. staff are still there, he comes to the quick realization that everyone was vanished apart from the hostile, moving toys that Playtime Co. experimented on. The videotape recording suggests that the staff were murdered by entities below them who were seemingly set free by Experiment 1006. And by that, he means the children or the people they experimented on as they usually observe them from platforms above. Though still missing, today's events are no doubt in relation to him. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. We must forge onwards in the name of science. Whether those who are beneath us understand it or not, end of... Therefore, the protagonist realized that he was tricked to go back to the factory and quickly decided to leave, setting Puppy free on his way, who seemed to be friendly and acted as a guide at first. Whilst on the train heading to the exit, which is a straight path through the train tunnel, Puppy soon reveals that the protagonist is too perfect to lose and that she cannot let him leave. When she suddenly changes the direction of the train, going to the path on the right instead of straight. I was so scared she'd put me back in that case. But you saved me. You are perfect. Too perfect to lose. I'm sorry. I can't let you leave. Poppy also mentions that she was trapped by mummy longlegs in the glass case, which gives us an important clue that they opposed each other for some reason. To understand what Puppy's true intentions are, we must first understand Mummy's intentions, or at least try to, to some degree. On the surface, Mummy's intentions are quite black and white. She wants to kill the protagonist as he is a member of the staff. The staff who experimented on her and trapped her in the Playtime Co. factory. Therefore, it's evident she doesn't really like the staff of the factory, which is further confirmed in the experiment notes found about her in which she's described to be hostile towards the staff who was planned to be conditioned in order to become more obedient. Now just because Mummy is an enemy of the staff doesn't automatically make Puppy a friend of the staff. Quite contrary, Puppy seems to be much more manipulative than Mummy, having ulterior motives with the protagonist, clearly lying to him and hiding a secret. Whatever Puppy was doing seemed to be something Mummy didn't agree with, leading to her trapping her in the glass box. Maybe Puppy did in fact want to free the protagonist, but after seeing how resourceful he is, she decided to keep him and use him longer, continuing on her mysterious mission. I have a theory for this, which I leave for another video, as we're getting a little sidetracked from the topic of this video. Where were we? Oh yes the train. Whilst on the train, Puppy goes on a menacing monologue acting as an evil mastermind, informing the protagonist he's too perfect to lose, when she changes the train tracks, leading to the right than the initial street path it was supposed to go through. It's not clear as of yet if the path straight did actually lead to the exit and protagonist's ultimate redemption, or if it led somewhere much worse, a place where the protagonist would meet his end. As when Puppy says the protagonist is too perfect to lose, it could have double meaning. First one that comes to mind is that Puppy wants to keep him trapped with herself, not letting him leave the factory. And second, it could mean that she is trying to save him from dying. Whatever the meaning is, it's clear that Puppy doesn't want the protagonist to die. At least, not yet. 
After each death, the protagonist is revived with encouraging texts appearing on the screen, cheering him to push on forward. At times, however, the texts are much less encouraging, and instead they are more manipulative and seem to contain sinister cryptic deeper messages. Even at times, proving that the protagonist is just as important as being used for whatever purpose the writer to these messages has. What's very interesting, however, is that after each death, a flash of white light is seen on the screen, followed by a buzzing or ringing noise, as if the protagonist was shocked by a defibrillator. This is exactly what the protagonist experiences at the very end when observing the playcare signboard, but we'll get back to that a little later. As the train changes directions, Poppy continues with her evil monologue. She explains that she's never met anyone like the protagonist and that she has been stuck in the glass case for a very long time, which gave her time to reflect and think of what she would do when she's free. She further explains that she wants to set things right and the protagonist would be a perfect tool to be used for whatever as he's quite capable. I've never met anyone like you. <laughs> Do you know how long I've been stuck in that case? Well, too long. I had so much time to think and reflect. Time to figure out exactly what I would do when free. We'll set things right. Terrible things have happened. But I know that whatever I need you to do, you're capable. We will... This clearly shows that the protagonist is manipulated and controlled to some level. It seems as if the protagonist suffers from memory loss and doesn't remember much of what happened. After all, if all of the staff within the factory died, why would the protagonist be the only one that survived, if he actually ever did and ever saw the light of the day outside? As the scientist in the first videotape suggests, one breakthrough would mean the ability to be resurrected, a death that he was not too worried about. I'm not worried about myself. One breakthrough and I'll be back. It's very possible the protagonist died but managed to be resurrected, but as a result, suffered from memory loss and forgot who he is. Either way, Poppy finds him to be a perfect tool to use for her intentions and mysterious plans. Things she wants to set right, as she mentioned. But what are the things that she wants to set right? There are two major events that come to mind here, which could be considered as mistakes and different perspectives. Through the scientists and staff perspective, the breakout of the dolls and experiment 1006 being out of control was considered to be a major scientific flaw, something that wasn't supposed to happen. His absence was a flaw in the scientific process, which should have under no circumstances been left unaccounted for. Therefore, if Poppy possesses the soul or mind of a staff member, if by any chance Stella Graeber, she might want to re-establish the factory, bringing it to its glory days as seen on a large photograph back to the heyday of 1992. In other words, setting things right. So that would in a way explain why Mommy Longlegs trapped her in the glass case and didn't want her to proceed with her plans. But if Puppy possesses the mind of one of the experiments who was forcefully transferred into a doll, she possibly considers what Playtime Coke did to be wrong and evil, experimenting with human lives and trying to give dolls consciousness. Therefore, trying to fully topple down the organization and setting the dolls free could be considered setting things right at this perspective. Through either perspectives, keeping someone like the protagonist is a logical thing to do, considering he's so capable who managed to destroy both Hakiwagi and Mommy Longlegs, two of the most menacing dolls in the factory. As Poppy is continuing on her monologue, she seems to be quickly stopped by someone or something, gasping an incomplete exclamatory sentence of what is, before her calm system is cut off. This leads to the train losing control and achieving exceedingly higher speeds, causing the train to derail when the protagonist pulls the emergency brake lever. 
Poppy seems to have control of the situation until she was stopped by another entity of some sort as she made the exclamatory remark, seeing something she did not expect ending her monologue prematurely. It's unclear as of yet what this entity was and what its intentions were, but presumably, just like Mummy Long Legs, they oppose Puppy and don't want her to continue with her mission. As the train derails and flips, protagonist loses his consciousness and briefly sees the Plaker sign, before a flash of white light followed by a buzzing sound brings this chapter to an end. If by any chance you are thinking this flash of white light and the buzzing noise seems very familiar, you are right. Every time the protagonist dies, he experiences exactly the same phenomenon. He sees a flash of white light, then followed by a buzzing noise and messages telling him that despite what it might appear, he's far from being dead and that death is not permanent. I believe these screen messages are not just a gameplay gimmick, but in reality, they are trying to tell us something. The death seem to be in fact canon and each time he dies, he manages to reawaken and start over, seemingly not remembering what happened before. According to the death screens and what the protagonist experiences, he seems to die as the train derails, but of course, as we already know, death is not permanent and the protagonist is too important to lose. Therefore, he'll just get back right up, continuing on his mission led by Puppy, but this time, he has to face whatever entity interrupted her. Now why would there be two tracks for the train, one leading straight and another to the right? Well, the children are actually put under observation and tested when they are set to play games. They are placed in each game individually, with specialists giving them scores for each game. Based on their level of success, they could be sent to playcare, where they are kept for further examination. Playcare, of course, is a play on words for daycare, a place where children are kept until their parents come back from work or whatever errand they need to run. Therefore, that means the children are kept in playcare for a very long time, moving there from the temporary game station. That is, if they are desirable by the Playtime Co. It can be only speculated to what happens to them in there, going over some hints and evidence shown through the game. Elliot Ludwig is shown to have lost a dear family member, a man who was said to be divorced. Playtime Co. is the product of a great man by the name of Elliot Ludwig. Divorced, but a family man at heart. Therefore, who else could be an immediate family if the spouse is out of the picture? Well, children. So it's clear that Elliot lost his child as appropriately labeled a tragedy which made him defy the laws of nature and try to bring them back. He started experimenting with puppy flowers using their incredible properties of reviving live creatures. This of course led to more sinister plans, probably testing suitable children, killing them and trying to bring them back. And that is, if he doesn't want to use them as a vessel to transfer the consciousness of his child to their motionless bodies. Therefore, Playcare is just another level for experimentations deeper in the bowels of the dark and evil organization of Playtime Co. If you enjoyed this video and want to watch more theory videos, make sure to stay tuned right here by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.